Happy Thanksgiving week. Today we thought we would go over some of the breeders that helped inspire me. These are people that I relied on for either advice to learn or even people who inspired me feeding the obsession of what I love and that's animals. This is just a list of some of the people who I consider some of the most influential. There's a lot of people out there. These are in no particular order and we are going to start off with someone who I watched a lot of their videos and that would be Chris Hardwick. Chris at one point was uploading videos on a daily basis about mostly ball pythons. Where I think that Chris stood out and where he kind of inspired me was with his morph highlights where he would kind of go over a ball python morph and show you a brief bit of what it can do. And we've tried to do a few videos like this as well, but he did these at such an incredible rate that he was able to have all sorts of different videos. And I can't possibly keep up with the rate that he did on some of these genetics. And I Honestly, that's where it kind of taught me and just seeing this and seeing how it interacted with other genetics. That did a really great thing for me personally and I think for many others, just showing a lot of these morphs, whether they were really popular or maybe they were somewhat forgotten. He would talk about supers and complexes. He'd talk about certain combos at times too. And on top of all that, he would show off some of the more down to earth knowledge of everything, the operational side, whether it be egg collection or setup or incubators, so on and so forth. Chris was actually a scientist I think as well and he just decided he wanted to kind of do his own thing. His content was incredibly knowledgeable. There was a lot of it when I watched during the pandemic shutdowns. I'd be at work but sometimes it'd be just so incredibly slow. At the time I worked at a retail store and we literally closed to the public and I probably got like five calls a day if that and I had a lot of downtime let's just say. Now since about maybe two and a half years ago Chris has pretty much stopped uploading videos. He did upload a couple randomly. I don't think he's breeding or anything like that. I think that he went back to his mainline job of being like a chemist or a scientist. I can't remember exactly what it was, but his YouTube channel is still out there. If it's something you wanted to take some inspiration from on morphs and any of the other general knowledge that he was able to share in the very active time that he was on YouTube. Next, I wanted to talk about Olympus Reptiles. Olympus Reptiles, I think, has been doing YouTube for about 10 years or so, which is a pretty darn long time, if you ask me. But similarly to Chris, there was a lot of knowledge to be had from Olympus Reptiles. And you can tell the passion behind everything that he did. I learned my method on how to assist feed from Olympus Reptiles, which is actually upside down. When I started doing it that way, I always felt it was the most effective way to get the rodent into the mouth. I am almost always successful on the first attempt and very rarely need to make a second attempt at assist feeding an animal. Really just kind of a no-nonsense kind of guy. He, he doesn't worry about the glitz and the glamour, about setting up anything. He gets up there and he just talks and he doesn't worry about what really anybody thinks about it. And he's going to tell you how he feels about something and how things work for him, which I think is really important. Now, Matt and Olympus Reptiles were mostly synonymous with ball pythons, but they did a little bit more, including some venomous animals. Now, that's not what my main forte was, but they are very, very cool. Mostly, I watched and subscribed for the ball python stuff, but it was really refreshing to hear his take on many different things, whether they be controversial or time relevant at that moment or market related. Just a wealth of knowledge and by no means one of the big time breeders but it doesn't take a big time breeder to make a big time impact. Sadly, Matt has had some personal issues come up recently and will actually be starting the process of getting out. It hasn't happened yet, so you can still go watch him. There's a lot to learn from someone that's been in the business for as long as he has. Next up would be Mutation Creation, arguably Canada's biggest and one of their most quality breeders for certain. Billy, similarly to Olympus Reptiles, will tell you how he feels about something. I have co-opted some Something that he said quite often if do what works for you and stick with it it basically means to me that if something that you find works out for you sure take advantage of what other opinions are and ways of doing things and maybe tweak to see if it does better for you but if something is working for you that's really all that matters besides the obvious teaching you how to incubate eggs and how to sex snakes and everything like that to find out their gender he would often give you his advice on many many different subjects whether it be feeding how to get a snake to eat what is working for him and how it can be employed to work for you. There's a whole wealth of knowledge that can be had from him, including his own personal advice. He's been around for quite some time and he knows quite a lot, especially from the business side of things. He will tell you no nonsense tips on how to get to a certain place when it comes to this as a business, when it comes to this in a monetary way, creating cool snakes. That is what draws people in, but there is a monetary side of it. And Billy is a wealth of knowledge on what 
what you can do to be very successful in those regards. So definitely something one that you should check out. Now, Billy hasn't been actively uploading to YouTube in a while, but he is still an active breeder of ball pythons, and he is still very much active on social media, giving interviews and going live, sharing his advice and uh, talking about current hot topics that might be coming about. So whether it be on YouTube or on social media like Facebook, or taking a look at what he offers on Patreon, there's a whole wealth of knowledge that can be had from him. The next one up is a mainstay for any ball python breeder, and that would be Canova, run by Justin Cabelka. When I first started watching him, it was just Cabelka reptiles. Justin has an eye for creating awesome morphs and the tools to do it. There's so much inspiration to be had. I find myself using him as a benchmark of where to go on how combos work together. Any of his videos are basically showing you absolutely gorgeous animals at nearly the top tier potential of where you can get them. Whether it be clown combos or my favorite monarch combos, desert ghost combos, or new up and coming genes like one he just recently spoke about called the Cosmos. There's a whole bunch of inspiration to be had watching the Canova team and what they're able to create. Obviously there is knowledge to be had, but there's a whole bunch of inspiration in watching these animals and seeing how, just how insane they can get and what directions you can go and just kind of watching himself explain kind of the thought process sometimes of how he gets to where he's thinking about creating certain animals and what direction he thinks it may go, how they might look in certain combos or why sometimes less is more in many cases even. Often he will even go to expos outside of the country. I believe from this year he went to Japan, he has gone to Europe. You can start seeing the ball python community from a bit of a different lens where you can kind of see a lot of these other breeders that have the same passion as us but a different view and many different genes, genes that haven't even been released here in America. There's a whole bunch that you can find out by watching his channel, a whole bunch of inspiration that can be had and just absolutely beautiful animals. I mean sometimes just showing off cool animals is all you really need to do, right? And he does that perfectly. Next up I wanted to discuss an amazing inspiration in Tom Harbing. Tom remains one of my biggest inspirations to this day as a breeder and more importantly just kind of how to act as a human being. Tom unfortunately as many probably know passed away um, way too soon, um, as the best people sadly seem to do. Tom obviously was a major inspiration in terms of why I kind of went the monarch route. And monarch genetic is something I'm very, very passionate about. And I was passionate about it in general before I even got to know Tom. But when I would talk to Tom at shows and when I first reached out to Tom to ask about the monarch gene, Tom was very readily available for advice on the monarch gene itself. For someone he'd never met before, he was so welcome welcoming and kind and if you knew Tom you know this story because he was this way with everybody he was what everyone should inspire to be in terms of how they act as a breeder or as a person quite frankly towards others he had a sort of southern charm so to speak that sadly is missed but thankfully he does have his family carrying his legacy on and I know he'd be very proud of that as well they are just as kind and helpful as he was so the apple did not fall far from the tree regarding that Tom was an absolute leader in what you can do with the monster gene. The monarch gene is just absolutely wonderful and beautiful, but he was kind of on the forefront of everything like that, just innovating. Until this year, all of my monarchs were actually from Tom. But beyond being a champion for the monarch gene itself, his just mannerisms and way of speaking, there's no one that's ever met or spoken to Tom that won't tell you what I'm telling you. He was just an incredible person and obviously it's easy to miss him even if you barely knew him it felt like you knew him incredibly well because this that's how unbelievably kind he treated you and we do miss him i definitely miss him i miss talking to him and i think that his inspiration to me beyond just the monarch gene is to show you how a genuine connection with people is not only good for business obviously but it's good for yourself and your soul and i think this community could learn a lot for just coming together and treating each other the way that tom treated people and then finally probably who inspired me the most to get into breeding ball pythons would be Garrick de Meyer with Royal Constrictor Designs. Garrick has a whole wealth of knowledge. Everything I just mentioned, you can definitely put it towards him. Garrick isn't worried about the flare or the flash or getting a fancy shot with some music in the background or anything like that. Although he did take a few steps to make it a little bit more fancy, I feel like, within the last year. Garrick just gets in front of the camera, does a one take, talks to you, and just spills you with knowledge and shows you awesome things. 
things. Funny story, where I had gotten bow pythons and I was dabbling in just ganging knowledge when I saw him show off a snake that he had hatched and it was a banana anchi clown. I don't know what video it was, but I remember that moment. That's when my brain went and I thought I want that animal, but I don't want to pay for that animal. So I'll make that animal. And so I have to obviously admire Garrick. I have since gone and made that animal a few times. <laughs> I've made even crazier things personally. And I've gotten to know Garrick a little bit and talk to him anytime I see him at a show. He has been doing breeding of reptiles, not just ball pythons even, but of just many different type reptiles. He was actually into primarily geckos before he kind of switched primarily to ball pythons. But he's been doing this, I think, longer than YouTube has been in creation. He's been there for pretty much the entire growth of this industry and all of its ups and downs. Often with Garrick, what he would do is something a little different. When we bring you egg cuttings, we show you, we kind of look in there. Garrick has done egg cuttings, but primarily he just says, this is what I got out of an egg cutting. He just cuts to that right away and just says, look at here. And starts start showing you in a way that just amps it up with, of course, the MVP of it all at the end. It just kind of gets you wanting to stick around and watch more. So I have to put Royal Constrictors as one of the most inspirational breeders personally to me. There are a whole bunch of other breeders that inspired me as well. People that, you know, like Bob's Balls and CD Constrictors and Jim from Southwest Wisconsin Reptiles, who's been always an incredible resource to me and just an incredible human being to talk to. I could go on and on and I recommend all of the people who I've mentioned even just now. They're incredibly inspirational in many different ways. If you like this video, you can actually check out some of our most recent Tinley Park NARBC show footage for more inspiration of beautiful animals right here and here.